Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by Allison Denny, a fellow massage therapist in California with Rebel Massage. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much for being here. You're part of my ongoing uh, project to interview a fellow massage therapist in all 50 states. And you're going to, well... It's something to do, honestly. <laughs> True. It's <laughs> and, a good thing to uh, do. I mean, I think this is maybe the third episode in, and I'm just like, this is awesome. Like, just get <laughs> to learn about what it's like to become a massage therapist in different places and to just meet really great people. So thanks again. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. My pleasure. So if you wouldn't mind, before we talk about California, could you give mm-hmm. us a little origin story as to how you came to massage? I know you have nearly 20 years of experience. I do of over 20 years of experience at this okay. point. Yeah. I mean, at, at this point, yeah, time just keeps ticking by. Love it. So yeah, it does. A, little, a little comic book number one, if you don't mind. Yeah, I don't mind at all. So um, I was racing triathlons and receiving a lot of massages. Um, and where I was living in Boulder, Colorado, the, the Boulder College of Massage Therapy was right there. And at the time it was considered one of the best schools for massage therapy in the country. It had won all sorts of awards and accolades. And um, I just started to feel the benefits of of the work with my training. And I was like, I could do this. Um, And I just did. I literally just kind of dove in and and started to work with lots of triathletes and started to get really involved in the sports arena and just stayed with it. That's so great. That's my brief story, yes. That's great. (laughs) My story is even briefer than that. I I literally... (laughs) Thought about massage therapy, thought it sounded interesting, and went to school. <laughs> I, didn't have, I didn't have like a. I I think I'd had maybe one professional massage before I went to school for massage. Oh, therapy. That's funny, but yeah. I think when you know, you know. It's kind of like one of those things. Like yeah, you're either like people who do hair. They either know they want to do it or they don't, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Maybe, maybe I could do hair too. I'm pretty good at my own. <laughs> uh, yeah, but then I, I re- my, my children were born, so then I took like a three, four-year gap, and I only just recently reopened my, my practice, well, started my first private practice uh, here in Portland in January, and then um, the COVID crisis kind of took me by surprise, so now I'm navigating like being kind of a new startup and getting back into the field and having that happen, so it's been kind of an interesting time. Right. I mean, yeah. I think it took us all by surprise. Yeah, we're all for sitting sure. in the state of like, what just happened? Ooh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. So uh, California. Now, I've, yes. I've always heard like, whenever I've heard people talk about becoming a massage therapist in California, it's always been with a little hint of like, a cautionary tale about oh, the really? different sort of rules they have and how they classify people. So I, that's all apropos of nothing. Like, I don't know what's true and what's not. So I would love for right. you to, speak to what it really takes to become a massage therapist and practice as one. Down well, there. at this point, it's different. I think what you, what you may be, um, <laughs> the stories that you may have heard are more about the way it used to be, possibly, which when I first moved here. Um, so just, I guess, down this same path, I think this is an interesting story. When I graduated from massage school in Colorado, um, there was literally no regulations around it you like if you wanted to go to school you go to school and if you didn't really want to you could still hang up a little sign over your office door and say I'm a massage therapist there was nothing and then it became more and more regulated um and it just so happened to be that the school I went to had it was a thousand plus hour program and had unbelievable resources but um there was no formal regulations and so when I moved to California all the regulations were from city to city And because California is so vast, Mm -hmm. I mean, I was living kind of near Santa Monica, but working in Venice and then, you know, anywhere else I had to get a job, I had to look at what that licensure was like and it was different. And I had to take, there was all the different tests that I had to take. And then all the different, I had to go to different city halls and get licensed in all the different cities and pay the different fees. And it was uh, not fun. So in about, I'm trying to remember, I'm really bad with dates, but about, I want to say, gosh, maybe eight to 10 years ago, and I could be off, but around, it was good ch- a good chunk of time ago, um, California made it state regulated. And so that has been a huge lift off of all of our shoulders. And there was a 
kind of a transition where it was people still didn't really know what to do. But through the California state um, regulation, um, CAMTC was formed. And so that's the California Association of Massage of something. California Massage Therapy Association. Okay. And um, now everything that we do kind of has to be approved through them. So schooling, I think minimal is, I want to say 520 hours. Um, and at this point, I think it's, um, it, you, there used to be a difference between what was called a massage therapist and a massage practitioner. Okay. And now it's, there's just massage therapists. Um, is that what your designation is? Massage, th- are you licensed massage therapist? Yes. Or? I mean, when I, when I graduated, it was kind of more considered where I was like a licensed massage therapist was considered to be a little bit under the, the, um, certified massage therapist in terms of hours. And so when I came out here and I was like, no, I'm a certified massage therapist. Mm. And they were like, no, 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 you're a licensed massage therapist. And I was like, no, no, no. (laughs) Cut to my ego a little bit. Yeah. But, um, but yes, I'm a licensed massage therapist. Um, and however, I mean, yes, exactly. So it's all California licensed. Um, but the schooling is, you know, I think pretty, pretty, standard from state to state at this point there's all the different um classes that you have to take and the anatomy and the hands-on and and the you know the the regulations of of knowing ethics and boundaries and state laws and all that kind of stuff does california have its own test or are they doing the mblex like a lot of places at this point we're not doing anything we did have to take the mblex yeah yes um the mblex so we switched over to the mblex Actually, there was nothing for a while, and then it became the Emblex became mandatory um, around right after the time that CAMTC was formed, when California became state regulated, and then um, um, the M they stopped enforcing the Emblex. It was like a year ago, and oh. I wish I could remember the reason why, but they stopped, and I can't remember so, why. So, so now, now you just have to go to school. You just go to school. And then you have you to get, get yeah. a business you, license or whatever. You have to get certified through California, yep, CAMTC. They oh, just I have see. to approve your school. Oh, yeah. huh. Yep. What do you think about, uh, it seems I've asked this question a few times now, the likelihood or um, uh, whether you support it or not, a national standard. Do you think that would um, elevate the industry or is it just I do. I do. I actually do think that it would. And I am one of those people that really got away with not taking any of the tests. When I graduated, I didn't have to take it. Um, I took the Emblex out of um, when it came out. I was just like, I, would, I didn't have to take it because I was grandfathered in. Hmm. Um, but I took it because I wanted, I just wanted to know what it was like. And um, I do think that it creates a, a, a standard that needs, I think mis- the massage therapy field needs to see because I always, my biggest fight in this career in general is always kind of what we teeter on out there in the world of like massage salons and that really drives me nuts. And then, so mm-hmm. when there's a state, when there's a national test or a, a board exam that we have to take, which we don't have to take at this point, but I do think that it raises the standard. And I think if that was mandated, it would help. Yeah. Cause there, to my knowledge there, I, I should just look this up now. Are, there are still a couple of holdouts with zero requirements, right? States. Uh, states. I think you're right. And I don't, yeah. No, off the top of my head, but yes, I think you're right. I mean, the flip side, I think when, when you have to take the test is that a lot of the questions, I I, I don't know how, have you taken that? You said you're Mblex, but, but it was, you know, back in 2010, but similar, I think the questions become really, um, they go a little bit away from the field of massage therapy and almost into like nursing, which I, 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 I I struggle with. I think there's Mm. a lot of questions that I'm like, I, I don't know if I, this is something we ever really need to see in our practice. I've never seen anything like this. And um, I think it's good information, but um, I do think that the, the quality of, of knowledge that we need to have needs to be upheld. That's hmm. for sure. Yeah. Where does something like that start? I mean, I'm sure there's people working on a national standard. There but... are. Yeah. I have known people who, who help create the test. So it's a yeah. group of people who come together and they decide what questions are on the test. Yeah. No, I guess I meant to, to create oh. that sort of like, the the national standard where all states have agreed that it's a thousand hours and that it's right there's a certain test that we all take and it's like yeah yeah that's a good question yeah. i that's wouldn't a, even know that's yeah, a hard thing to navigate know. yeah i mean i would imagine that some uh some group 
kind of similar to ABMP or a AMTA or um, like the massage therapy conference, not massage therapy association. I would imagine that they kind of need to kind of come together and, and lobby on something. Oh yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. That's a big change. So, yeah. oh, okay. So that's about becoming a massage therapist in California. Are there, um, uh, I was just talking to someone about all my ums and ahs, and now I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Turn not to. We're all Darn human. it. Darn it. Uh, continuing education. Are there requirements there? Nope. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Well, if you're in California, you don't have a requirement that I would uh, charge you with the very least to watch the Rebel Massage Therapist <laughs> YouTube channel. Because it will provide you with so much education. You're so sweet. So yeah, great I mean, what you're doing there. But it's. I also teach continuing ed classes here in California, and a lot of people come take them because I yes. think, I think it's just you know it's it can only benefit yourself if you are obviously I'm going to preach a little bit about education, but I it can only benefit your practice the more educate the more education you have, yeah, the better off you are. And I think a lot of massage therapists who love what they do and, and are passionate about this work, but like what, whether or not we have to take it is like yeah. a non point. Like we yeah. just want to be in there and learning more all the time. Yeah. I haven't but encountered, yes, I haven't encountered many therapists who get out of school and go like, I'm good. I know. <laughs> I've learned it all. No, I'm done. I learned it all. <laughs> I got this down. <laughs> sure. Oh man. Sure. So, um, well, here we are in the, 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 sh the shutdown of the, the world. Um, mm -hmm. If uh, the the state of your state, what what's mm. going on down there? Uh, right. We we're gonna, we're gonna shut down by uh, governor uh, governor order. Mm -hmm. uh, stay home, stay healthy. I think something like that. Yep. Order. So yep. it effectively shut down the massage therapy industry here. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Ours did too. It's it's now we are now as of I think today. If we're not wearing a mask out there in public you could possibly get fined a thousand dollars so it's oh, wow. mandated to even wear a mask but yes we just are just going not, for a walk even no not not a walk or exercise but if you're going to go to the grocery store indoors go, yeah yep, yeah something some public place yeah um but yes massage therapy was considered a non-essential business and therefore got closed down so if you're you, we are not allowed to practice at this point right um, and oh i I, I printed something out that you wrote. I'm gonna. I, I just feel like it sets the tone so good for this question about how we're what we're doing with ourselves during this time. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm gonna read it back to you if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know just, what it is. It's from an Instagram that you posted. Okay. I thought it was great. It says isolation can raise a lot of questions, a lot of concerns, and a lot of fear. Connect with your clients. Reach out to them. Be the voice of calm. Be the connection they need. Remind them that fear can be detrimental to immune health. Remind them about stretching, meditation, and breath. Lockdown doesn't mean letting go of your practice. It means practicing different forms of connection. Massage therapy is, after all, an essential business. The essence of it is just shifting for the time being. So great. Wow. Is it That's weird like, to hear that I back? I like that when you read it. Yeah, a little bit. I like, <laughs> I like your photo. Like, cool. Such a great yeah. thought. But so, I just like the, the tone that you set there. And um, if you could speak to what you're doing and, and any colleagues and friends you have, what you're speaking about, how you're... How you're occupying your time during the during the stay home? Yeah, for sure. Period. Um, so for me, my clients are not really my. I, I don't practice as much anymore. So for me, staying connected with my clients is more about staying in touch with um, my followers on YouTube, my followers on all social media. Um, I have a, a Patreon page that I work very hard to give them lots of content, um, and and trying to keep the community alive. So for me, this uh, lockdown has been about um, keeping our, our community healthy and strong in a time where, because we are so touch oriented and all of a sudden, not only not receiving the kind of touch that we would want, even just when you go see a friend, like I wanna hug my friend and I can't, um, which I'm not going to see friends. I've just like, it's, there's an, you know, it just when even, mm -hmm. even if you were to see somebody kind of curbside six feet away, um, that lack of touch is really palpable. Yeah. Um, but for, for us who, when, when we work, our work is so hands-on and so tactile that um, staying in touch with clients 
and how we can keep engaged with what self-care is all about is unbelievably important to me because I do think that the minute this virus lifts or the minute that the, the stay at home um, ordinate lifts, I think we are going to see a massive influx of clients. And I think that if we stay in touch with those people and remind them who we are in their lives, mm -hmm. I think they will, you know, if, if I'm reaching out to my clients, the second this lifts, I'm going to be the person that they, that they call and want to get a massage from. Um, so I think that for me, it's been about continuing to stay in touch and, and keep any kind of feeling going about, um, a, how important what we do is, and B, how easy it is to let all of this turn us inward and have that be a hard thing when if, I know for myself that I, in my hard moments, because I I have them myself and I have moments where I'm just like, this is insane and I cannot believe this is happening. And I get down, I, I find myself looking out for somebody to kind of pull me up. And I feel like we can be that people so often for our clients. And if mm -hmm. we reach out and continue to remind them, this is temporary and, you know, there's all these amazing things you can do for self-care and let's completely make sure we stay in touch. And, and when this lifts, like, let's start the work again. I think those things are really important. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, for my part, I've been thinking about what can I do to um, communicate the importance of massage therapy mm -hmm. and what can I provide from through Instagram or YouTube or mm -hmm. TikTok, which I think is a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> I want to try it. I want to try TikTok. You got to try TikTok. I know, so I know. I'm uh, and just like, so what, yeah, once this lifts, we can hit the ground running and, and yeah. get people back on the table and get people back yeah. up to where they need to be. So all yeah. this, all this collected tension we're going to be storing in our bodies from this time. We need to find a way yeah. to get it out as quickly as we can. In a yeah. Way. yeah. 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 And I think that social media is really interesting because it's, it, I think we're now kind of living in this world where it is the only way we can connect, but at the same time, I, I, I almost feel, I have moments where I'm like, I'm, I cannot be on a screen anymore. I can't do it. Like I, I, I am so much on a screen now that I'm finding myself, like if I don't go outside and just go for a walk, I'm going to freak out. So yeah. there's, you know, the balance of really wanting to stay connected, but finding that own, like, you know, as, as always making sure that we are taken care of first and then reaching out and making sure that the people that we love and care about are, are healthy and with us. Yeah. my an interview I did with an organ therapist here, she was talking about how we're sort of in this national experiment about touch deprivation. We all yes. get to sort of like play it out together and see what it's going to be like. Yeah. So how interesting. do you, how do you feel this whole experience is going to change our industry? Um, I, or what would you hope for? I, I would hope, I would hope exactly. Yeah. I think I was going to actually say that I would hope that, um, um, dovetailing what your organ therapist was saying, I, I would hope that people will all of a sudden really feel on a deeper level how important touch is, because I think it's unbelievably true, especially people who live alone at this point um, and don't have a roommate or a partner or something that they, somebody that they can be with and talk to. Um, I think that I think the 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 idea that massage therapy is an essential business is one that I like the when the government started deciding what was essential and non-essential, of course, like the massage therapist inside of me was like, this is the most essential business ever. <laughs> <laughs> like this is when we are needed the most. But yeah. you know, of course we can't. But I do think that it it'll boost the the level of of awareness of how important touch is. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, I've been having these conversations even with my own family members and the people that I'm around a lot who who are, you know, kind of like, whoa, this is insane what it feels like to not see everybody every day and to not be able to hug somebody and and those basics that we take for granted. So yes, yeah. I think it's gonna raise the awareness big time. I think that's such a good point. Definitely. Certainly. Yeah. And I think that yeah, and coinciding with where we are at, if you look at the history of massage therapy in general, 
we've come so far and we have definitely become a more um, elevated career. Mm -hmm. I think it's, this could be a really good tipping point for us in terms of like, yep, this is exactly what we're here for. And this is exactly who we want to be. And we know what we're doing. Cool. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to shout out a few things about uh, what you do to anyone listening. You have to go to rebelmassage.com. (laughs) <laughs> the the collection of videos that you've produced are just like next level. They're such an inspiration to me. Thank you. To some of the content that I'm trying to do. Uh, I have this mission to record full length body work sessions. And I want to get modalities all over the country, all over the world, all of, from different practitioners and, and show that to people and, and try That's to use awesome. that to elevate the, uh, the industry. And just like, awesome. the way that you capture and the education you provide. If you're a massage therapist and you have some downtime, go go learn some things. I, I refer to it a lot. Thank and you. and YouTube and Instagram, that's great. And also what the other thing that's so cool about what you do, I want to get it right, is the anatomy body painting. Yes. That's so <laughs> neat. I, it's, it's, so, fun. it's so do you do the painting? Did I catch I do. That? Yeah. I do. Yeah. So like an artistic background too. Like that doesn't look yeah. easy to do. It's fun. I mean, it's fun for me. That's the way I learn. So I think, um, I, you know, when I started kind of, um, making sure that I was really good with my anatomy, when I started teaching it, I, I find that when I draw it, it's how I learn because I have to look so specifically at every little detail. And so I'm, I become way more detail oriented about the actual anatomy. And I think if you are an artist, try it. It is really fun. And it's an amazing way to self-educate. Even if you're going to draw a system, like draw a lymph node in an armpit or something, or draw, yeah. you know, like a vein or a blood vessel. I am not an artist. I think I might start <laughs> using my, I have some coloring books I keep meaning to go back to. And I should say people might be listening. They might know, know what we're talking about. You basically take an, a live body mm-hmm. and, and like pick a muscle or a struck uh, a collection of muscles sometimes, right? A muscle really, or it's like a muscle one group. Off like quad, group like yeah. Hamstrings, yeah. And you just do like a really realistic rendering of what it would look like if we could peel off their skin. I'm editing currently the, the suboccipitals. So I just painted the ah, suboccipitals and that's, that's a it. One. And yes, I needed somebody like you. I needed a nice oh, clear head if i could come down oh did you find you found one i take it <laughs> i did i found yeah. one actually my co one of the people that i have um collaborated with to open the school that is down here in long beach we just turned our whole school online so we're teaching all of our anatomy online at panacea holistic institute and he was one of the co-founders of the of the school and okay he volunteered to shave his head wow that's yes. commitment right there yeah well he was really close <laughs> oh okay <laughs> Nature decided to shave my head. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then the other thing is um, you you sell uh, really wonderfully named uh, massage body butters, body, body work butters. butters. Yeah, I do. I do. Like, you are uh, on it. <laughs> game, game of Bones. I like yes. that one. Yeah. And Ruth Butter Ginsburg, among yes. other very interesting names. And I'm excited yes. to try those at some point. Yes. Um, Happy to send some yeah. your way for sure. Oh, cool. I, yeah, that's awesome. So where, when did that start? Where, where did you come up with that? You just wanted your own. Um, I was, when I was teaching, I kept getting these big vats of, of creams and oils that I was just like, I can't do this. And, and I kept looking at the ingredients and I was just like, this is overwhelming and I can't handle it. And I didn't like it. Like I really yeah. quite literally, it was so much more driven by the fact that it just didn't work for me. Um, and there was a couple of things that I liked a little bit, but I just started to play around with what I thought would work. And then I all of a sudden was like, yeah, this, is, this is so good. How could other people not like this? It was so effective for the kind of work that I was doing. That I was kind of like, this is, you know, there's no preservatives in it. There's no chemicals. It's totally simple. It's very organic. It's all handcrafted. And so it's, you know, for me... The only thing I ever use ever. <laughs> nice. But yeah, it just came from a need for me. Yeah, that's great to scratch yeah. your own itch like that and solve the problem. Yes. That's yeah. smart. Totally. I will send some your way. Allison Denny, Rebel Massage Therapist, thanks again so much for being on the Massage Hodge podcast. Can't thank, thank you enough. You, Thank you. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, talk again soon, I hope. I, I may, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to wave goodbye, and I might ask you a question after we stop this recording. So Sounds good. Thanks for listening, Sounds everyone, good. and we'll Bye. see you soon. Bye. 